Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. This is Outre's Laurel, and if you guys missed it, I posted a review on this video a couple weeks ago. I really liked this wig. I thought she was really pretty. However, there were some significant cons to this wig that I just couldn't look past. She definitely sheds and tangles quite a bit. She's awfully long, so I wanted to bring her out today and show you guys what she's looking like. I wore Laurel for the review video and one other video that same night and this is what she's looking like today. I wanted to come on here and revamp this wig because I do like it and I wanted to be able to get a few more wears out of it. There were some people in the comment section saying they had purchased Laurel but now they kind of feel like they shouldn't have because of the cons that I mentioned. I wanted to show you guys how you can change up these wigs and make them work for you. So this is what Laurel is looking like today. Like I said, I only wore it for the review and one other video that same night, I maybe had her on two hours. I didn't even get up, walk around, didn't go outside. I literally sat still, filmed two videos, and she's very, very matted. Just looks very frizzy and it's not what I was going for. It's not the look. She definitely also sheds quite a bit. The first thing that I'm gonna do is part this unit straight down the middle. I'm gonna try to make my part as straight as possible. I'm not the best at parting, but in order to get an even cut or an even as possible cut, you wanna make sure that you're working with about the same amount of hair on each side. I am not a hairstylist. I do not cut hair. I've never been to cosmetology school. I feel like I can get by and it's a synthetic wig. It's not my natural hair, you know what I'm saying? I'm not really going to give you guys a tutorial on how to cut a synthetic wig, but if you wanna follow along with this video, I hope that I have given you enough footage to feel like you would be confident in trimming your own wig at home, if that makes sense. I am using a shirt as my guideline and I'm going in with actual hair shears. Now on a synthetic wig, I don't really think that it matters. I definitely don't think you should cut your own hair with regular scissors, but these were the ones that I had on hand, so I went ahead and did it. So I'm pulling the hair taut and cutting it at the same length. And the reason why I split the section in half was because I just wanted to work with a smaller section because I feel like it's a lot easier to get a more even cut than grabbing a huge chunk of hair. I feel like sometimes your scissors slip and your cut is gonna look really jagged. So go with as small sections as possible. So always go in and trim a little bit longer than what you want the end result to be. That way, if you feel confident with trimming a little bit more, you're good and you haven't cut too much off the wig, if that makes sense. This wig did have some big bouncy curls, so you're gonna have a little bit more forgiveness with the precision of the cut, which is nice. If you're working on a silky straight, bone straight unit, you're really gonna have to have a more precise trim. But with these curls, they're a little bit more forgiving, like I mentioned, so it is easier for a beginner to go in and trim the hair. So I'm just gonna let you guys watch how I trimmed this wig, and I'll be back with a few tips in just a second. are looking like after I did that blunt cut. I'm gonna grab the hair and with my scissors going straight up vertically, I'm going to cut the ends. This is gonna give it a more feathered look and kind of thin out those ends so they're not super blunt. So I haven't trimmed the ends on the left yet, but here on the right, you see that it's a lot more flowy and a little bit thinner and not so bulky looking. That's what this technique does. So be very careful so that you don't trim your fingers and cut yourself. You definitely don't want to do that, especially if you're working with really sharp scissors. You don't want to do that with any scissor, but I'm just saying. This technique helps it thin out a little bit and make it look a little bit more natural. I'm going to go ahead and finish up this cut and I will show you guys how I laid this unit. It was very easy. All the products that I used for this video will be linked down below in the description bar. 
They will be affiliate links. So if you guys use those links down below, you are supporting the channel and I definitely appreciate that. Here is the final cut and here's what it looks like in the back. I had a few stragglers, but I can easily go in and just pull those out or trim them and I really was happy with the final result. So this unit did come with a faux scalp, but if you watch that original review, I went ahead and removed it because I just felt like it was unnecessary. And with this installation, I went ahead and sprayed down the lace with my EBIN tint spray and that matched my skin really, really nicely. So I used my Gatsby Glue Free Spray and my blow dryer and laid down this unit and all I did was add a little bit of pressed powder at the end and I felt like it was blending in perfectly to where I didn't need to apply makeup. I was originally gonna wear makeup and do a whole intro and outro and all that, but I was like, you know what? I'm not really feeling too good and this is looking real scalpish. So I'm just gonna go ahead and slay this wig with no makeup. I know sometimes you see all of us wig bays here on YouTube with like a full face on, but you don't have to wear a full face in order to slay these wigs. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you want to see more wig transformations or videos like this here in the future, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and turn on the bell so you never miss an upload from me. And I will see you guys in my very next upload, which will be very, very soon. Bye!